Hello everyone, my name is Jacob and welcome back to another B-Board tutorial. Today, I thought I would take you through my preferred steps to coding the B-Board. If you are new to the B-Board, then you're probably curious about many of these onboard components and how they work. Well, they require code. Code is this kind of specialized language that computerized devices like the B-Board understand. The earliest computer programmers often referred to their first program as Hello World. This is what I like to do with the B-Board when I haven't used it for a while. I try to think of new ways to introduce the B-Board to the world or introduce the world to the B-Board. All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to navigate to my browser, code.brilliantlabs.ca. Today, I'm using a computer with a USB connection. You can use a tablet or even a phone to program your B-Board via Bluetooth. But we'll save that for another video. Now that I am at code.brilliantlabs.ca, I'm going to start a new project while making sure to give it a unique name. Why not Hello World? Spelled properly. So by naming my project, this makes it easier to find later, and it's important to select which version of Microbit I am using with my B-Board. Today, if I pop the Microbit out, I am using version one. If you need more help creating a project or selecting your Microbit, be sure to check out our other videos on how to do this. Okay, as I'm thinking about what I want my B-Board to do, I'm considering all of the ways that my B-Board interacts with the world around us. Just like you and I, the B-Board can sense different things. The B-Board and the Microbit together have a little bit of ability to sense sight, sound, and touch. We call these inputs. That is, they are the inputs to our code. Whenever we want our code to react to these or other inputs, we call that outputs. When you feel a mosquito, for instance, land on your arm, your brain tells you immediately to swat at it, to get rid of the mosquito. When you hear your favorite song, you start singing along. We can do the same with our B-board. Our code can wait for certain inputs, like a light turning on to turn on an output like a spinning of a motor. This input and output relationship is the fundamental reason for writing code. A list of instructions for our B-Board to know what to do when it senses something. All right, since this is called Hello World, this code, it's meant to really be our first exploration to the B-Board. I'm going to try to use the simplest of inputs and outputs, keeping in mind that I can always adapt my code to better fit my project later. In writing code like this, I often start backwards with starting with the output I want to have happen and then deciding on how to make it happen with the input. For instance, if I want to make the B-board play a little melody every time it starts up, I might do something like this. Underneath the music category, I'm going to select play melody and put it under the input of on start. It's an event. So on start is the input and the output is going to be play melody. Now, if I really want to get fancy, I can come down here and design my melody that I want my B-board to play every time that it starts up. Great. Oh, there it is again. By the way, Every time you open a new project, your code workspace will already be populated by two blocks. For this code, I'm hardly ever going to use, or not at all, the forever event. So I'll just click and drag on that over to the category toolbox to delete. I can also right click, playing again. I can also right click on any block and select delete. All right, next, I want to see these blixels light up in a special pattern. You know, I used to teach science and I remember students using the old acronym, Roy G. Biv, 
to remember the colors of the rainbow. So what if the Blixels could step through the colors of the rainbow in order, starting with red and ending with violet every time that I press A on the micro bits? Okay, under the input category, I'm going to select on button A pressed and bring it over into my workspace. Now sometimes the simulator will play through the melody every time that I make changes. I can stop that by clicking on the little square stop symbol underneath the microbit simulator. All right, so let's build the output, uh, the blocks inside the input that I want the B-board to do. So we were talking about Blixels. Underneath the B-board category, I'm going to select the cat category of Blixels. The very first block set all Blixels to red. Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow. Perfect. Now, scrolling back up underneath the basic category, we're going to scroll down until we can find the pause block. Now, there's a couple of things that you should know about this pause block. It has a drop down list of increments measured in milliseconds or seconds. This drop down list does not preclude you from entering in a custom pause duration. You can put 6,000 milliseconds in if you want your pause to, have to be six seconds long. The other thing is, this pause is always measured in milliseconds. I'm going to select 500 milliseconds, or if I wanted it to be 502 milliseconds, I can enter that as well. I wonder if anyone will notice a difference. Now, I need to duplicate the set all blixels to color block. I'm going to right click and duplicate that block and come down and select orange for my next color. Right click, duplicate, pause, and we're going to do that uh, Roy, red, orange, yellow, G, green, biv, B-I-V, uh, five more times. Uh, and so now we should be able to step through all of the colors when we hit A. All right, it's now time to program our micro bit. To do this, I'm going to click the download button on my code. Here it is right here. Now, sometimes our downloads go to interesting places on my computer. Um, it's important to note that I am plugged into my micro bit via a USB connection. You can also download this on a tablet or a phone via Bluetooth. If you don't know how to do that, we'll have a video forthcoming to show you. So my computer pops up with this dialog box. I can hit done. And if you're using Google Chrome, you will see your downloads appear down uh, along the bottom of your screen. The little up arrow you can click and it brings up a dialog box that you can use to locate your file. So show in folder. And here we are. So these are all of the recent files that I have downloaded recently. And then over on the left hand side, I can see that the micro bit is there. And so I am going to click and drag the hex file over to the micro bit. And let me show you what's happening with the overhead cam. This yellow light is flashing and look at that. My code must have transferred because it started to play the melody as an output that I use as an input in my code. So, all right, I'm feeling good. I know that my code must be at least partially working because I heard the melody play as soon as the code was transferred over to the B-board. Let's check on the Blixels. I'm going to press A. There they are. They're blinking through Roy G. Biv. Oh. But look at that, it doesn't turn off at the end. Huh, I know, because remember, a code only does what you tell it to do. I didn't tell it to turn off, so why don't we make that change? I'm gonna come back over to my desktop, and I've already added the block in for you. Why don't I get rid of that and I'll show you where I found it. Underneath the Blixel category, I'm going to grab the set all Blixels to block and this may be a little strange for you but in order to turn them off we're actually going to select black black just means we are going to turn them off probably something new that you haven't thought about before why don't we re-download this to our b-board um, so i'm going to make sure that my b-board is still plugged in my micro bit is plugged into the usb cable perfect and in my code i am going to click on download 
and you can see uh, this dialog box comes up that says download completed. I can hit that, click on the up arrow, show in finder, there we are. I'm going to click and drag that over to the micro bits and we'll go back over to the overhead camera. I see that it is downloading because the yellow light is blinking. I should hear a melody any second. Boom! Now let's see if the blixels turn off with that little code change. Here we are, blinking through the RGB, the Roy G Biv, and they turn off. Excellent. We made a change to our Hello World. We have shown the B-board to the world. Great! Look at that! It worked! How awesome is that? We gave our microbit and B-board a list of instructions to follow based on our inputs and our outputs, and it did it. That's the great thing about code. It does exactly what you tell it to do. But at the same time, that's the bad thing about code. It does exactly what you tell it to do and nothing else. The code will not make any assumptions for you. If you code your B-board robot, for instance, to drive forward, it will drive forward forever, unless you code it when to stop. This is important to remember, sometimes, I like to pretend that I am the micro bit or B board and act out what the code is telling me to do to help me solve any issues that may come up as I go along. There are lots of different techniques and strategies for troubleshooting your code and we'll talk about that in a future video. But for now, let's celebrate! You've written your Hello World code for the B board and it works. Congratulations! Now why don't you make some changes to the code you just wrote and try reprogramming to observe what happens. The best way to learn to code is to keep coding, keep exploring, and always remember to stay brilliant.